like this is a bit more risque, but I kind of want to bring this up because it's funny because I was talking with Kat and she does like more <laughs> NSFW type posts. And my oh, yeah, favorite, I do. my favorite comment she ever made about NSFW was whenever she like text her friend or, like a bad dragon link is like pick your dick. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ones You Lost podcast, where we talk about everything art, art-related, and our stupid opinions. I'm here with Alyssa. Hello. <laughs> and Kat. Say hi, Kat. Hi. <laughs> All right. So today we wanted to kind of discuss something that was kind of been on my heart, and I really wanted to get this done for uh, the first podcast because I thought it was a good topic to discuss and that is, in general, how I think um, those 10 steps to improve your art aren't a very productive way to learn art and can actually teach you bad habits, especially on places like TikTok. So yeah. I'm going to start by just kind of saying, um, if any video gives you 10 steps to improve your eyes or your faces, they might have good general advice, but the issue is they don't quite give you a real understanding of what needs to be done to get that advice. Understanding things like form or lighting, it's just general, like, draw an almond shape. It's really not what you're looking for. Yeah, I, um, it's, uh, <laughs> do we start talking now? Yeah, you can go and start talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I, I couldn't tell if the intro ended or not. Okay. Yeah, no, I just, um, I just went straight into it. <laughs> yeah, we okay, just cool. Yeah, right into it, man. Yeah. Right, right, right. Oh, awesome, awesome. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm already giving you shit to edit out. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah. Any, anyways, yeah. Um, yeah, totally. To just kind of expand on what you're saying, it's like. There's like maybe the occasional diamond in the rough, but even then, it's like if you are like. If you're learning how to draw and like you, you know, you have a lot of problems with your, your art and you haven't studied fundamentals, which I, I would say a good majority of um, self-taught artists uh, skip those because they're, they're not very fun. They're not very like entertaining. Exactly. They're um, like the chores of a art. Lot of, yeah. Right, it, it, right. Like, I, like, even, even with how long I've been drawing, I, I still have trouble trying to like make myself do that. So... <laughs> Right. Well, it's, I mean, like, um, I, I'm a self-taught artist and like, I didn't start, I didn't start studying fundamentals till I was like 18. Mm -hmm. Cause it was like, um, I, I remember I started taking art like quote unquote more seriously around 14. Cause I was like, okay, this is what I want to do yes, same. Uh, when I'm, when yeah. I'm an adult, but it's like, I didn't start studying fundamentals till I was an actual adult. Um, and even then there's still stuff I neglect, but, but anyways, it's like, uh, when you're learning and you haven't done this, it seems like a, it, it kind of like the equivalent of like a get rich quick scheme, yeah. or like for skill yeah. instead, you know, when you <laughs> see like, uh, 10 steps to make your art better, it, it's like, maybe if you have a trained eye and you have studied the fundamentals, mm -hmm. maybe you could look at those um 10 step things and you're like oh i see what they're exactly doing. it's like, like they're less useful if you don't to they're worthless yeah they're, it's, yeah right exactly the issue with an absolute, it's like if you don't have that trained eye it's gone yeah the issue with being an absolute beginner and getting these 10 steps is usually within those 10 steps they're doing very advanced things yeah, yeah. and it kind of just looks awkward if you don't necessarily know what you're doing yeah mm -hmm. so like the main takeaway like, that we've been trying to uh tell our students, I know me and Alyssa have been, we each have our own students, me and her. Uh, no, we don't do the same lessons. I have a separate thing and she has a separate thing. She's better at teaching adults. I'm better at teaching kids. But most yeah, of my students true. are adults <laughs> anyway, so it's been a challenge for me. But one thing that I've struggled with, I've noticed with students, is motivation is a huge issue. You'll, you'll give them not homework, but things to practice. They come back in their lesson, they're like, Hey, what are we learning today? I'm like, first things first, did you practice what we went over last time? They're like, no, but I was hoping we could go over it today. I'm like, that's not what these lessons are for. If you want to waste money, you can. Right. But if you're not actively practicing what we teach, then you aren't going to develop an eye. I have a student who um, is super nice and super awkward, but I'll, I'll assign homework of some kind or just something to practice I only wanted to do it like maybe 10 minutes, you know, bare minimum. 
10 minutes, find 10 mm-hmm. minutes in the day to practice proportions practice uh form lighting and wh- what i do is i don't even make her do all of that I, we pick one for the week and we focus on that every single day uh i mean that makes sense i mean t- to to tackle all of that in like you know one sitting would mm-hmm. be a lot yeah yeah that <laughs> would be overwhelming my, the, i, I the, love how loss is giving off the idea it's like welcome to professor loss's class did you do your homework <laughs> yeah essentially because <laughs> um what I'll do is I'll assign a week long program because my goal is when we get into the next lesson, now that she's practiced all of it, I can I can start feeding her more advanced stuff within that. I always teach uh, I always teach perspective and and uh, space first because understanding the space you're utilizing in an artwork is just vital to getting good composition. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. Sure. Well, especially if you're doing it traditionally, yeah. where you can't like squish and squash and shift and move things. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Like every time I'm in my sketchbook, I'm over here like trying to hit like the imaginary control Z, and then I get very upset when I realize I got to flip <laughs> my pen around and actually erase something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you can flip your pen and erase yeah. shit. Dion doesn't let you do <laughs> <What>? that. <laughs> oh, you use Dion. I use Dion. Yeah. Oh, I use Wacom. I use, yeah, because you yeah. like spending money. Uh, yeah, man. It started with professional shit right out the gate. I, um, I've done reviews on Huyon. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I know this isn't the topic. No, it's okay. You can it's go like, ahead. Done, yeah, it's- yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done reviews on Huyon, and they're not bad tablets, but like, I, um, I. I realized how limited their sensitivity was mm-hmm. when I started helping out Brandon. Um, cause he, he used to have a Huyon and like, I'd be like, yeah, you, you know, you do it so light. It's like, you know, it's just like traditional, like where you don't like put any weight on the paper. Mm-hmm. You just kind of have the tip, like push around with gravity yeah. and it wouldn't register it. Well, that was, that was like the crazy. biggest lie <laughs> yeah. I think Huyon told whenever I was first getting it. Cause I'm like, uh, granted oh, the version I have isn't half bad, but and the sensitivity is really nice. I've got a good gradient, but I also kind of help the sensitivity along because I make custom brushes and I will adjust the mm, sensitivity uh-huh. curve to compensate for it. See, okay. <laughs> so I used to use Huion. <laughs> Huion was actually like my first like ever like tablet. Right. And I learned very quickly that it was not me proof as in like I broke two of them. <laughs> How'd you break them? I, I'm just not good at like keeping up with my cables. I was packing it to like take it to school and stuff, and uh, oh, okay. like it just. Well, that it, that must have been last. like an older it stuff. It did not right? last. It the, did not last my manhandling. They were like because <laughs> so they started out being the cheap, like cheap company, right? And then they started developing right. quality as they earned more money. Which props to them. Right. Which I mean makes yeah, sense. Like, yeah. Like once they started <laughs> making know? money being the alternative, they they actually I think are a competent alternative to a Cintiq. Mm. Um, oh my god, I fucking hate Cintiqs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I use it into us. I use the pad. Nice. I um, but no, I actually I couldn't agree more. Um, my uh, uh, if you want a screen tablet, I think a Cintiq is a scam. No, totally I think it is way too much money. Yeah. It is ridiculous. It's like thousands of dollars. Like, and the colors. No, aren't I, would, that I, I feel that. Yeah. Some somebody told me one time that they yeah. love Cintiq for the colors. I'm like, oh, so you like fake colors? Right. That's so weird. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, teach their own, I guess. Yeah. Like, I, I just personally so, hate okay, screen so tablets. Okay, so for me, like the, like, the brand that I kind of landed on is I had, like, Veek, like, a very small company, like, reach out to me mm-hmm. at first. And, the, like, they were like, oh, we just want small artists to try our tablet. And, mm-hmm. like, it was, right. like, it was, like, a little nice thing that they were doing. And uh, they sent it to me. And I, like, so I will say something else about Huion was their installation process was just... No. <laughs> yeah, it's, that was, it's it was bad. Rough. Yeah, because I, I always had to like, really I, I, cause I ended up like uninstalling, reinstalling multiple times, and uh, it would, it just was like it didn't want to be compatible with me using Paint Tool Sai. Um, mm-hmm. huh. At that time, it, I was just experiencing so much issues with it, mm-hmm. and. With yeah. Veek, it was like one and done. I have not had an issue out of Veek, really. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was installing my drivers, uh, I, I remember I called support and support was like, have you tried like plugging it out and plugging it back in? I'm like, no, <laughs> I haven't. This is my first time plugging it in. 
And I just decided to call you to be there for the experience. (laughs) Thank you, IT support. But they were they were really sweet. But they were like, "Here's an up to like a prototype driver that might help with your issue." And what I found was um, they hadn't actually updated a driver for like Windows 10 at the time. Oh, so uh, that might have been the issue I was experiencing. So what I was doing was I was basically like. It was miserable. And when I finally got it to work, what ended up making it work, weirdly enough, was plugging it out and plugging it back in. But you had to do it in a very specific way. You had to install the driver first, plug it in, calibrate, unplug it, plug it back in, install it again, then unplug and plug it back in, and then it worked. Yikes. With, yeah, okay, like, with Beak, it was like, it was like, plug the tablet in, click this link, you're done. Done. We're done. Already on your computer. Yeah. <laughs> We're ready to go. <laughs> Yeah, Wacom is, it literally is just that. It's just like, click this button, okay, boop, well, install to restart your computer. <laughs> the thing was, I've been told with the recent Cintiq line that they've been doing that that hasn't been the case, and they've been having just as many problems as Huion. I mean, I wouldn't know because I don't use Cintiq. <laughs> yeah. You, you, yeah. you spare the price tag I use, tag I use and like, frustration. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, fucking... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the pads. Same. Pads are the best. <laughs> the I, I tried out. Way. I tried How out nice my friend's that? screen tablet, and I was like, "Ah, uh-huh. I don't like this." <laughs> yeah. I found yeah. that out very quickly, and I was like, "Good thing I didn't spend a bunch of money." Well, it's like right. the only reason I remember I got a screen tab was because I didn't want to lose my hand skills because I was using the pad for so long and not drawing on paper that I was actively forgetting how to draw on paper. I was doing. I, I do both. Wild. I do both. I've I've never had that problem. Yeah, yeah. Like, literally, I was in my... I was just drawing in my sketchbook, just doodling last night. Like, I, <laughs> I mean, hey, everybody's different, though. Yeah, you know? like, like I, mean, I, I actually yeah. forgot how to draw on paper. I was, like, putting Again, my, uh, like, my hand down on the paper, and I'm like, this feels wrong. This shouldn't feel wrong. The fact that this feels wrong is proof I should not be using the tablet. <laughs> you, wow, like, you can I ask mean, Lost. Yeah. Uh, like, every time I go over to my fiancé's, I, I have nothing with me. Like I, I don't have like an actual like iPad to like draw on or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I just have my my sketchbook, and so right. that it keeps me in practice because I'll get in the mood to draw. And I never like I, I at this point, unless I'm like you know a wink away from sleep, I will get up and draw if I get the urge to draw because yeah, inspiration just makes me work better. <laughs> well, that that kind of reminds awesome. me, Cat, because like a, a while back you were you were going through it, and we can talk about this too. The issues of going through a block. Yeah. Um, oh man, I Kat think that's was real hard. Cat was in a rough me? block. I remember <laughs> at the time we were playing Genshin together, and you yeah, know, Genshin kind of took over yeah, my life and for I was a hot like, minute there. Hey, Cat, when are you gonna <laughs> draw okay. again? She's like, I can't. I'm too busy playing Genshin. <laughs> and I'm like, that's unacceptable. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no. it was. I ha- okay, I was playing Genshin like an unhealthy amount. Like, I want you to know, uh, it's uninstalled off my computer. Oh, uh, <laughs> like I had to uninstall it. I as still- much as I love Genshin, like I love Genshin so so much, I had to like be like, all right, let me just you know pry my controller from my grubby little hands. <laughs> no, I have to have Nahida now. <laughs> you gotta respect the self control though That's like good. i um <laughs> fuck i've dedicated my soul to elden ring in the last year yeah i've been I, playing like, elden ring. I, I, um, I hit a block again as soon as tears of the kingdom came out <laughs> oh, i still haven't played it because i've been i've been stuck on elden ring still and by stuck i mean i've just been wanting to play it like, i i pre-ordered game, but... tears of the kingdom my guy nice. like, i have i have a zelda tattoo it is the one tattoo i have and it's oh the that's awesome on my hand <laughs> That's I would so get cool. a tattoo, but I was I'm like, one of those... I'm finally out. I'm finally out of art block. And then I, w- I was like, yeah. And then Nintendo was like, get back here, bitch. <laughs> it was funny because um, I basically, like, for a while was studying to become a tattoo artist because, like, the, oh, that's the, cool. people, who so were, cool. the people who were training me were like, we want to train you because it's so hard to teach someone who comes in. It's like, I want to be a tattoo artist. It's like, are you an artist? They're like, no. And it's like, <laughs> Apparently that's super common. It's the reason why a lot of tattoo oh. places suck is because they they basically really? ap- oh, they wow. apprentice under people who know how to draw, but their entire career all they've done is essentially trace. Yeah. Oh, oh. 
you know, did you not that did you not know that about sense. a lot of tattoo that artists? That makes sense. Like most, I, ha- I actually had no small. idea because are just I mean, professional like, tracers. Because like I, right. I have, well, I mean, have they friends be, that work in tattoo places mm. and stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, like I never like really go to them. Like like uh, I went to one maybe like one time just because I was like that was when I was getting my septum pierced. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. but when I actually got my tattoo done, I had my cousin do it because he grew up an artist, fell in love with it. And he was like, I want to do tattoos. And he's self-taught. Yeah. Nice. And I mean, he I has mean, such you know, a light sense. And, like, I want, like, because, like, I, I have to say, for someone who is self-taught that I this was happening in my uncle's, like, you know, living room as I was getting tattooed. Yeah. Or to I, be, like, in a place like that. I, I, it did not hurt. It was awesome. Yeah, because <laughs> I apprenticed awesome. under a studio, which uh, our studios are so, like, good studios are so rare in tattoo industry because like i said most people are people who just like learn how to download an image off of google and then overlay it on top of your arm and draw it in um Mm -hmm. but studios like their whole purpose is to create something unique based on what you want and okay yeah uh, that's what i was training under because they were like no anime is a huge market so like you're actually an asset to our tattoo shop being able to provide that Hell yeah, That's dude. so cool. And awesome. the reason... Yeah, I have a friend that's oh, sorry. doing it right now. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm yeah, sorry. No, <laughs> the the <laughs> reason that tattoo apprenticeship didn't go through was because the owner... It was duly owned. One was a businessman, the other was an artist. And the artist was the one doing most of the work, and the businessman ran the numbers. Well, the businessman yeah. was embezzling money from the shop. Oh, we well, we don't yeah, love that. We don't stand that. Yeah, yeah like he, that is not girl boss behavior. Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just take about eighty percent of the revenue, leave him with twenty. He'd be like, "We're gonna invest the other eighty into your business, and then just fucking pocket it." Dude, God. that's horrendous! Wow. Yeah, so they had to close really? the tattoo really? shop, and they were saying how the only, and he was thinking the only way he was gonna be able to keep the shop open was to eventually get the piercing license that they didn't have yet. And so he was working on getting that, not realizing he was making plenty. Yeah. It's and, like, I understand, man, like, rough. I understand, like, Did shops. he sue his ass? Uh, I would he's, have. He's, Holy shit. They knew he was a broke-ass artist, so, like, whenever he went to go sue, the lawyer's like, you don't have enough money, you don't have a big enough retainer oh. to take this yeah, on. Yeah, that's civilly. just, that, that's just, right. like, the sad thing sometimes. Cause someone can be absolutely in the wrong. Yeah. And but oh, as yeah. long as they got a good lawyer... Like, as long as they matter. have money, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's not even, like, good lawyers, just money. And, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Um, yeah, yeah, big unfortunately. Um, yeah, uh, but, yeah, like, my friend, uh, my, my friend Brittany is, is apprenticing right now yeah. under um, a, a tattoo. And she, she is an artist. She's a good artist, mm-hmm. too. She actually has, like, studied fundamentals and everything. And mm-hmm. she's great. She like but, you hear? know, like, I... I always felt like, yeah, like a good tattoo artist was kind of like not common. And I guess that makes sense. I didn't know that like the prerequisite to so many tattoo uh, shops didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that people were just walking in being like, I haven't drawn a day in my life, but I'm here. (laughs) Yeah, it's like usually the people who become uh, tattoo artists are the kids in high school who liked art but never really committed themselves to it. Yeah. I could see that. So yeah, and then you get the, like, the good I noticed, like, tattoo I artists or the actual my friends, artists. Like a few of my friends uh-huh. who became like tattoo artists. Like it was actually mm-hmm. kind of mind boggling for me because I had never took art class with them, even though like we were in the same grade. Like yeah. you know, like I had never seen right. them take art class. It, it like I hadn't even seen them draw like at all. Mm. Right. Like these were the same kids that were asking me to draw something in their sketchbook for them. Yeah. <laughs> like draw something on <laughs> my notebook. Funny. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, oh well, I must have had an interest in it. Like you just Finally, like, like yeah, no. permission to draw titties for my friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, all the power to them, right? I mean, you know, learning yeah. a new skill can happen at any age. But it's also like, if like you're don't get me wrong, painting, it's impressive. Or, sorry, drawing, like, they're doing great work. Drawings. It was just great. surprising. I'm, I'm like, because like I had, like, yeah, yeah, like because the like one of the people uh, was this girl I went with I went to school with Morgan. Uh, mm-hmm. honestly, she seemed like she was going to be a writer more than anything, because, like, I read some of, like, mm-hmm. her, her little things that she would write, and they were wonderful. Right. So, 
I, I thought she was going to go down that road. And she was like, surprise, tattoo artist. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> oh, good for you. Uh, That's cool. Uh, this yeah. is my favorite thing about doing these like talks or like organic podcasts is because the original topic is so different from what it is now, but it's also like, oh my okay. God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. Like we'll, we'll, we'll like we'll eventually pull back to it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, we, um, we can rendezvous over, but we can also, if you want, like, because you know this is like your thing. We can we can try to be better about like staying. No, on topic no, 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 no. Like, I'm I'm fine. I'd rather it be organic because like for for the most part, I don't want to adhere to a strict topic as much as I just want okay. it to be kind of an opening. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like we okay, open yeah, with this, yeah. and we I let do the agree, conversation move. Listening to conversations there. like this, like just like listening to people like go. Like, because these are the kinds of things I tend to listen to, like, while I'm drawing. And actually... Oh, yeah, because yeah. everyone loves hearing the podcasters talk right. about how this is the type of podcast they want to listen to. Everyone's like, oh, God, thank you. Talk more about how great you are. <laughs> 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 these are my favorite like, people. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I no, it's a humble a demographic out there, yeah. <laughs> God, I'm so interesting so and talented. Buy my shirts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like anyways so, shameless okay, cool. plug here commissions are over please. Yeah. <laughs> it's like and now a word from our sponsor me commission hey, me I'm so great yeah oh god would you do you want a commission that'll get done in like maybe six months i'm your guy <laughs> Do you want a commission that'll get done scary fast within two days and, like, I'm texting you at three in the morning? <laughs> like, I'm your girl. Does this look good? Oh, that, like, this is a bit more risque, but I kind of want to bring this up because it's funny because I was talking with Kat. And Link, My and friend like, Irish, he had commissioned me to draw his dragonborn, uh, like, he was, like, this gigantic, like, white crocodile man. Oh, uh, oh, wait, no, I think I saw yeah, that. I, yeah, I think like, I showed it to you. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, yeah. Uh, his, uh... <laughs> I cannot wait for the duck noise over this, I by the way. Uh, <laughs> I love that Alyssa. I know, of, of all the... Screwing right. the goblin. I always, and, I always right, picture I Alyssa as some sweet, like, pure, innocent thing, but then I remember, no, she's an adult. <laughs> she's an adult. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, and, like, oh, yeah, I mean... I met Alyssa once, yeah. and I was like, hey... <laughs> you want to see the naughties? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's so funny, because it's like... Yeah, I, I, think, um, I think a lot of people just... From my um, YouTube channel being consumed by Undertale. I, and also, I, I would generally, like, I would keep it, like, relatively family-friendly mm-hmm. back then. I, um... Yeah, I, I think a lot of people think I'm, like, this super, like, super innocent little bean that has, like, you know, never swore in her entire life kind of thing. Yeah. But This is the part where you, like, startle I'm them and not- say, fuck. <laughs> yeah, Alyssa likes to well, say the F word. It's it's normal. I mean, I've already let a couple slip, yeah. I think, in the <laughs> podcast. Because, <laughs> like, I just, I don't even, like, think about it. I mean, I, um... Fuck. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there I mean, they go, yeah. right? I just... Th- it's, like, my form of, um, I just, like, said it. Yeah. Um, it's, like... <laughs> I, uh... I want to come back to YouTube, but, like... I I want to, you know I want it to be more fun and like not as mm-hmm. um I don't know dry I guess I, don't I guess know. yeah yeah it's it's the big but reason it, I like, started be, this being podcast. family friendly is a little bit hard for right. me especially because again my humor revolves around ha ha pee pee yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right well I fucking I swear like a sailor dude yeah. and it's yeah, like same. I uh it gives things um, flavor. <laughs> And, like, one of the things I want to do, I mean, I still want to, like, primarily, like, stay an art channel, but I also want to just, because I want to do it, like, for fun, uh, I, I'm, like, making a bunch of little compilation clips of me and my brother and friends playing Elden Ring. Yeah. And oh, that sounds amazing. It is. Yeah. Oh, I'm so, I mean, it is, they're bad. They're going to be bad videos. It's not going to be, like, a well-thought out, let's play or anything. Oh, it's literally dude, just going like, to be random clips. I don't care. Those clips. are my favorite kind of things. I'm, yeah, I'm who okay. watches like Game Grumps compilations? Yeah, <laughs> I love oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah, and it's like I'm not gonna. Do you fucking think I'm gonna go through and censor every swear word we say? No. Like no. hell no. Uh, That's lost, so lost much time. Is, God just gonna needs to get a mouthful. Us. That's all I'm saying. God, God, like <laughs> Lord, Mister Lord of the Flame is gonna be like, would you like some fuck in your face? Because here it comes. I like, I, like, I assume, I assume with the like the censoring, like how it's gonna go is like Lost is not going to censor us saying things like damn. Like you know, tier one cuss words, but the moment one of us right. shout like "fuck," that's gonna be censored. I no, can't wait for that like I'm gonna <laughs> censor shit like the word "game grumps" and just confuse people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just censor random shit. Yeah. 
Like you'll just say you'll just be like in the middle of like talking uh, about like oh and by the way I got this new pencil and it's just like duck noises. Yeah. Which oh, by the way okay uh, so after like okay uh, finishing like with what I was saying about like the whole like Irish thing. Uh, one time when he was like sc- like screen sharing like uh, just like a video on YouTube. Like, we were talking, like, he was talking about potentially, like, commissioning me for, like, this NSFW piece. He just went randomly, I wonder what a crocodile dick looks like. And and, uh, before I could even, like, you know, react or click off the stream, he pulled it up to where both of us could see it. And I I looked at him and I was like, I don't think you want me to draw that. (laughs) And I was like, nor does a human dick sound right on an alligator man. Yeah. So I did what I, I did. I took my knowledge of the Bad Dragon website and was like, here you go. Take your dick. And uh, the other thing I was wanting to say with the whole duck voice thing. (laughs) Yeah. uh, So uh, one of my my friends' D&D groups, I learned that, uh, because, like, so Discord has obviously has that, like, new uh, soundboard where you can, like, you know, like, and there's a duck noise. I learned that one of their D&D groups have agreed that the duck noise, that like, the DM will just spam it if, like, everybody starts getting off topic and starts doing, like, ADH D&D. Yeah. And he like he needs them to come back. You mean, like the podcast? Yeah, yeah like this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so lost, just spam the duck button. I get guess us back I on topic. Could. I mean the soundboard's <laughs> right here. It's like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have way too many sounds. Uh and every time somebody rolls a nat one in that D D group, it's just <laughs> oh, that's the metal great. pipe now sound. That's awesome. <laughs> I just like I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this this uh podcast yet, but I, I just picture with my dumb ass I'm gonna be doing things like adding a stupid amount of reverb to like the word poop. So Please. I'm making a mental Please note do. of the time stamp for that. It's like an echo. Yeah, just reverb. it's just, just like goes echo. on forever. super angelic. <laughs> That's funny. It's like, I love shit. That. It's like the classic <laughs> yeah. games just like suck. Thanks for leaving a tail there, guys. You're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> <laughs> we know. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, to try and pull us back to our original topic. Yes. Just a little bit. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I remember, like, whenever I was, like, really little and I had first, like, you know, like, I, I had finally, you know, evolved from a crayon to a colored pencil. <laughs> I just, I, I, like, I wanted to, like, learn how to draw things. And obviously, I went to my school's library, like, my little, rural, like, rural county school. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, in the middle of nowhere. Got this library book. And I tried so hard to learn how to draw from it. And I just could not. Was it one of those, like, how to draw anime books? No, it wasn't even like... an anime one. Because at the cause I started out with realism before I moved on to anime. That, oh, nice. Okay. And so That's I, like, awesome. little me, who, like, little me loved dogs. Like, I had to attend dogs. I was asking my parents every two seconds if we could get a dog, you know? Mm. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, obviously, yeah. I was like, what do I want to draw? <laughs> dogs. And so I found a how to draw dogs <laughs> book. And, it, like, it was like, draw a circle, draw another circle. Draw another circle. Put a line right. through those. Now draw the rest of the dog. Yeah. <laughs> God, I I hate those things. I hate them so much. Like one time, um, me and Brandon went to I think Michael's or something, mm-hmm. and um, we we saw like a whole uh, display full of like those how to draw books. Oh man. And um, we just started like looking through them, and we were I was telling Loss this uh, in our last phone call, but it was like. Um, we were looking through them, and so many of them were so infuriating. For, like, I want to say a good 20 minutes, we genuinely were so, like, hatefully driven to make, like, our own how-to-draw book correctly. Because yeah. it, it's just, like, the worst thing. Because, it, yeah, it's like when you look at, like... I, I re- you know, it's funny. I almost wonder if I saw one of the books that you found, like when you were. Because that sounds really oh, they familiar. Still sell those books. Yeah. It does. Because like when I when we were there, I remember we we picked up a how to draw animals book, and there were no words. There wasn't even like a title for the was animal that numbers? you were drawing. It was it was just drawings. It was just steps, mm-hmm. and it was like as you said, I had it was just one like of those, and it was very enraging. It, and it's so like. It set me into such like a uh, a fucking rant 
like in the Michaels because it was like, as you said, it was like a circle and then another circle and then a line and then it, and then it was just like a finished dot. Yeah. And then the last one was like shaded. Yeah, ex- and it's like shading from what, like, how, tell me how to well, shade. Well, like the like, issue with them is like, I don't mean? believe for a second that they didn't just take a finished illustration that someone else made and then just drew over it with the circles. Yes. They, they like reversed and right. traced over. Well, while, totally while that did. while that can be a good learning technique, like if you want to like learn how to pose, like break it down into shapes and stuff, mm-hmm. it it wasn't a learning technique in this. Yeah, and I What's like how when you it, do get a book that teaches yeah. you how to break things down into shapes, you you want to be looking for like those twenty to forty dollar books by the masters that go through yes. everything. Like they're encyclopedias on how to draw. They're so good. But I remember somebody told me um, that they found this so, one that taught you how to see shapes. And I looked at them like, that, that shape's not even correct. They just put a triangle and a cylinder together, and that's more of like a cone, but it's curved. Shapes aren't yeah. simple all the time. Sometimes the shapes no, are more aren't. complex. Right. Well, it's like you have... Um like a lot of organic shapes that don't always break exactly. down into like basic yeah, shapes. Some of them don't it, even like have names, man. It's like, oh yeah, they just be I, little blobs. Little blobby if, dudes. if somebody was like, "Yo, break this snake down into shapes," and they draw a cylinder, they're like, "How do I curve it?" I'm like, "Yeah, right. that's the, that's the point of shapes. A snake is not a cylinder; it is its own organic object." Yeah, like yeah. If you want to break down a snake, draw the circle I for the head, really and then it. just draw a really weird looking tube thing. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, for the body, you need to be able to learn how to how to visualize and mold a shape. You need to understand how you take a square and like make a cut like half of it away, and then just take that shape and be able to elongate and stretch it and bend it. Right. Um, well, it's. Yeah, I, I, oh, those books. They're just so like, infuriating. So, or, or like, or like the TikTok posts, you know, where it's just like, first you draw a line, make things, or, you know, it'll just be like full of bad advice. Yeah. Or it'll like, oh, yeah. or it'll be like from somebody that does know how to draw, but they're not <laughs> good at teaching. So like, it's, it's just as confusing, if not like teaching bad advice right. too. So it's, cause it's like, the thing is that I think a lot of novice artists don't, they don't quite understand is the fact that art isn't just 2d images Mm -hmm. like you you have to yes i guess perspective almost well it's more than that though it's like i think a a lot of artists think of uh, like magician you're you're playing tricks on people to make them think something is 3d yes but i mean to kind of further expand what i mean is more like you're kind of recreating science Mm -hmm. in a way because like um it's like yeah, a lot of people, uh, they think it's just like, oh, I'm just making an image on paper, mm-hmm. you know, um, and I need it to look like something. I just need to look like it. That's, that's it. Mm-hmm. And that's, it's like, that's no, you should right actually now. be understanding what like, it is that it you're down. creating. Like, if you're right, drawing well, a person, think of their skeletal structure, their muscle structure, because that was the most helpful right. advice Lost ever gave me. Yeah. Right, yeah. It's like, if you can make the literal skeleton first... Um, and then, like, if you can understand how the muscle the range lays motion, over that skeleton. Like, and then, yeah, like, it's, like, one of the reasons why I think a lot of people struggle under, uh, drawing hands is because they don't understand how hands work. Like, I remember um, telling this kid once at Comic-Con, because, like, a lot of people will come up to me at Con and, like, ask for advice. Mm-hmm. And as long as I'm not busy, um, like, I'll do absolutely. it. Absolutely. Like, I really love, yeah, I love giving people advice. Yeah. And it's like, um, I remember I uh, explained to them that the inside of your palm is essentially like extension of fingers. Uh-huh. Like they are long, thin, bony joints and that connect to your, your knuckles and then go into your fingers and stuff. Right. And because of that, it's really, really flexible. It's not this flat plane that's stuck. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people think the palm of your hand is just like this, this immovable square. It's like, no, because it's like a bunch of little um, like ligaments, and, like beams, yeah. I guess. It's like, you know, if you take a beam or like six beams, like, and they're, they're all next to each other, you can curl them in and then you can flatten them out. You know, like mm-hmm. hands are the same way. So it's like, if you can understand that and like actually think 
when you draw, mm-hmm. instead of just trying to recreate a flat image of, okay, I'm just drawing a hand. Yeah. If you can understand how a hand works, you can draw a hand. The way I yeah. all, yeah. in all sorts the of ways. The way I break down a hand is I, I remember like the key things that I keep in mind all the time while I'm drawing hands is usually I'll keep in mind the there are like four different parts of just the palm. And usually I'll do I'll represent them in basic shapes, right? And mm-hmm. there's the there's the knuckles themselves which hinge on the fingers, but the knuckles don't land at the, where the fingers start on the f- back of the palm and the front of the palm. Mm-hmm. The like the hinge no. is different. Yeah. It's the reason why we have the extra crease in our palm. Yeah. And I always say like, and also things people forget when they draw the palm is the palm is curved. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And usually what I'll do is I'll draw palm first, then I'll draw the ends of the fingertips if I'm doing foreshortening and then connect everything in between. Mm -hmm. The reason I do it like that is because it's easier to foreshorten if I have the end and the beginning and then I know what's in between. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, that totally works. That, that's uh, one way to do it. It's not the exact way to do it, but it's the I, way like, I, I do it. I remember teaching one of my friends how to draw hands recently, like uh, my friend Megan when she was over. Like mm-hmm. I remember showing her because she said that was something she always tended to struggle with. And I like I started off and I was like, so the easiest method you can do is the box method, like breaking them into boxes at first. And I was like, mm-hmm. however, what I recommend is like looking at your own hand and start trying to like look at like kind of picture your own skeletal structure, look up the, like, look up the skeleton of, like, hands. Like, mm-hmm. I went in, like, to the whole, like, kind of, like, the whole rant lost gave me. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah. The best thing I can, I can actually, I do want to show this on the podcast in the actual video part, and if you can drop it in the DMs real quick, uh, Kat, but I want to show Alyssa, and then what, we'll have it on screen as well. Um, I want you to look at Kat's art, from whenever I first met her versus where it is now, just on and how much work she's put into it. Are you able to get that? Oh, I bet you yeah, yeah, so hold much. on. Let yeah. me let me go to my paint tool side because I <laughs> had just got clip when I first met him. Yeah. So I'm going to send like one of my pieces like right before I switched. Yeah. So But I, I'm so yeah, proud I, of Kat because she has improved so much. That's amazing. Yeah, she because Yeah, and like, all right, so uh, this was when yeah, I, yeah. this was, like, one of the last things I had done on paint tool side that I was super, super proud of. That's awesome, yeah. And so oh, now let so me cute. send one of my most recent pieces that I'm proud of. And this one's going to take a hot minute to send because it's a big file. It's a bigger it's file, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy. And, and this one right here uh, was a gift for my friend Percy like, a very, very dear friend of mine, they were telling mm. me all about this, like, a D&D character that they had that was named Dawn, and it, she just had such an interesting story, so I had to make a piece for, her, like, like for, like, this character. Do you see Ooh, that For movement? my friend Percy. Yeah! There. Oh, that's great. That's amazing. Yeah, color choice and, like, the, gl- the rim lighting. There's, yeah, that's great. More... You'll also see, like, the way I chose to do, like, because... Like, there was a hot minute whenever, because uh, I, I had came across one of those videos when I was first learning how to use Clip Studio right before I met Lost. And mm-hmm. it was, like, on how to do lighting. And it was yeah. basically doing a whole multiply layer over the entire drawing and uh, doing it, like, a like a, like slightly dark purple. Mm-hmm. And then, like, doing it about halfway on opacity and then making a glow dodge layer and then picking, like, a what they described as a sickly yellow color. <laughs> Mm. So the things didn't turn out too pink. It's it's like and, it's interesting, right? right? I used that, really and I was like, it, like it was it was okay, but I, like there was obviously times like where I missed spots, and I would notice it. And it was very frustrating, and it also wasn't just the great way to learn. Yeah, like how to right. do light and light sources. Like right, because like well, when you do that, you're essentially taking a shortcut, and you're limiting. You're not your actually, colors. yeah. You're you're not like actually. Um, using light dynamics you're you're using effects due to digital tools that traditional doesn't have and therefore real life doesn't have either Mm -hmm. to kind of create the simulation of light but you're not actually like when you use tools like that and not that there's anything wrong with doing it by the way you Mm -hmm. know um but you know it's like 
if you want to have really, really dynamic lighting, you kind of have to put that in manually. Yeah, it's like, uh, which is, it's, you know, what it's you're interesting, doing. right? Because the way we talk about this is like, technically, like a lot of people say what they like and find so unique about my artwork is my approach to lighting. And if I'm being honest, like my lighting looks good before I start adding all the processing. But By the I way, use, I, I, sorry. Go ahead, sorry. I <laughs> use processing to enhance the lighting that's already there. I Yeah, and lost copy Not to that. rely on it, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, for example, I'm sending a piece that I was very proud of the time where I was still using that technique that I had learned from that TikTok, and versus one where I had actually, like, you know, was looking at the light sources and, like, actually trying to implement itself into the drawing. Mm-hmm. And then also use, mm-hmm. I also used the post-processing effect and did a little bit of noise to give this piece texture. Uh, so I'm sending that as well, like as a good example to Heck show yeah. between, uh, you know, where I was doing the shortcut versus actually after studying like light sources. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. Big difference, I, um, yeah. oh, the Zelda, especially the rim light is so great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Like the difference, right? Mm-hmm. Between just like shortcut digital tools, probably from, um, you said you got that advice TikTok. from where TikTok? Yeah. Yeah, TikTok. Yeah, TikTok. Like, I have, I mean, like, I'll have to find the video later. Uh, but, mm-hmm. like, because it was helpful. Like, it's, like, a helpful thing. Like, if you're, like, a very much a beginner and, like, right. you don't know how to do lighting yet, but you still want your piece to look kind of cool, like, absolutely. Maybe, maybe do that. But, like, whenever you start, like, wanting to, like, if you're seriously wanting to get into art, I recommend, like, actually, like, like looking at those pieces, like, where they do, like, the circle and they show the overcast of, like, a shadow, everything. Like Do some light experiments. Learn yes. how lighting affects things. Right. Um, and, like, I want to mention this because it's something that very much helped me because I'm somebody who pictures things in their head. I like to imagine myself, right. like, uh, like in the drawing itself with a spotlight and I'm adjusting the spotlight however it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Like, if the light source is coming from behind, then, like, you know, it hits, like, the ridges on the very outside, like, you know, like, overcast a little bit on their shoulders. Right like, very top of their hair, but it won't be on their face very much unless there is something reflecting it. Mm. But it's, like, uh, so I, like, I, I imagine me just moving the spotlight around to get the lighting I want. And I used to, like, when I first got into art, I very much had, like, a mental mindset of, like, almost all my pieces had lighting source coming from one direction. One yeah. direction that right. I liked, and I wasn't learning anything from it. That's the reason I've been playing a lot more with light sources recently. Oh, right. Yeah, so you were kind of, like, comfort zoning a specific angle every yeah. single time. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, that makes well, sense. I mean, I feel like a lot of people do it. And, it, you know, I mean, like, that's definitely, like, I wouldn't say that's, like, horrible. I mean, it's great that you, like, expanded, right? And Because you do want to. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, it's better than just doing shortcuts. And then yeah. you'd be good at that one angle, you know, that really, really good at that one angle. Um, yeah. Which hopefully would help you understand with other stuff. I um I, I don't know the, the artist's name. Um, I'd have to do some digging. But, like, oh, I that. sent a visual. Yeah, this those is are such so helpful. A great, mm-hmm. So helpful. Because lighting is everywhere. And, like, the thing, too, that I think... Um, you know, go, kind of going back to, like, the whole 10-step bullshit mm. uh, doesn't work is because, like, when it comes to things like lighting, I mean, lighting is physics. Mm-hmm. So it is, like, really, really, really complicated. Like, a single light source doesn't just, like, hit an object slash a character and just stop there. Right. You know, like, it's going to bounce off the character. The light that is not being hit by the character is going to bounce off the walls and then, like, probably ricochet off the wall Carrying and then hit the character some of the and color and hit back to you right and it's like as that's happening um depending on if your light source has a color or not in it mm-hmm. um because when light disperses uh sometimes the like waves change which also might make like the the like rim lighting or the reflection light like you know, bouncing off the walls change color or it carries the color of the wall. Right. Because like color influences um, light. So it's like if you're if say if I have a white light, but like I'm in a green room, that light that's bouncing off the green walls is going to carry a little bit. And my character is going to have a little bit of green lighting on them from, you know what I mean? So it is. Right. It is. And, and like light is all just energy that captures 
images. It's the only reason why we could see color in the first place. Yep. So it is. It is so like. This is what I mean by like science, by the no, way. No, I totally <laughs> like, agree. Yeah, the it's more like you understand, you know we, what I mean? Because it's like the more you understand what you're science. drawing. We need to teach right. well, yeah. art. I think it's so interesting. It's the reason why I'm so big whenever people are like, well, how do I learn art? I'm like, understand real life first. Right. Understand real life. Understand science and math. Because mm-hmm. it's like a lot of like, um, uh, like, for example, like, I uh, I can understand and break down the light physics of how a bubble works. And because of that, I know how to draw bubbles accurately yeah. <laughs> um, when I paint them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I could just make a little white outline and then put a shine and then like a bigger shine. Mm-hmm. So, Or I could actually like understand what the fuck I'm doing yeah. and actually make like a really, really well, nice bubble. And because it's like so easy i could it's still like no work despite doing it more accurately and more aesthetically Mm. uh realistic but yet still cartoonized and everything like that with my style so it's like the first one just drawing a line like a like a little circle a white circle outline with like a little shine that is just i guess that's the difference between like uh mimicking an image when you're drawing Versus actually understanding bubble mm-hmm. physics and actually creating something with art the most, and like being able to like absolute make it most relatable to real fun life. Bubble for me to draw personally, like it, it's fine whenever I draw a splash and I want something like fun and kind of reflecting the light. But there's something really mm-hmm. fun about drawing a soap bubble, where it's like it has yeah. all the color in it. Right, because the chemical yeah. of the soap makes the rainbow we. Yeah. <laughs> That it's more yeah. challenging, but when you understand it, it's also a lot of fun because recently I've, I had this idea that I want to draw recently where it's like a soap bubble. And then what you see is uh, the character being kind of molded around the bubble. Yeah, like reflecting off. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. That, that is really neat. I'm going to I'm going to give that a shot here pretty soon because I've already like I'm like I said, I was talking with Alyssa actually about um about taking uh clip studios um three points fisheye perspective that it now allows you to use and i'm gonna just start doing extreme perspectives like curves like crazy the fact that clip studio even added that in 2.0 makes me just go okay like that was worth the purchase by itself in my opinion i still haven't been able to upgrade just yet unfortunately yeah I'll have to, like, I'll have to get it out of my next It's, like, essentially, stuff. like, as far as I'm considered, like, my only, like, sorry to Clip Studio Paint, but I literally no longer have any reason. I don't know what feature they could possibly add that could make me upgrade. I have everything I need at this point. <laughs> the moment they added that fisheye perspective ruler... Was when I was like, okay, I literally, that was literally the only thing that could have made my life easier at art at this point because I prefer to draw everything by hand, you know? Yeah, me too. Yeah. I have like, I don't fucking use any tool for this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, I know there's like the 3D models and there's the like, I mean, I, maybe I'll use the perspective grids um, just because perspective grids are such a bitch to do traditionally. Really yeah. Are. Like, I, um, you know, that'll be, like, a nice tool to, like, utilize. Mm-hmm. Um, the but, piece I had just said, well, by the way, I, I had to, like, fuck, like, I, 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 sh- yeah, I cut yeah. out so much of that time lapse just because it was me just figuring out the perspective of the greenhouse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I I like it, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, ghost it was, like, yeah, it, it was one of, my, one of my favorite commissions I worked on. Yeah, that's awesome. Is it just, like, it looks like first point, first point perspective? One, yeah. One point, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. It's, it, it's a little. It was like a little bit like point. it's a little bit of a simple perspective, but <laughs> that's okay. I, like, it's okay. I love no, how I mean, it turned. Like I, love I how would it actually out argue that there's a good chance that even though this is like one point perspective, like it almost has a third perspective just by how you've angled part of it. Like yes, it is one point perspective, but I could argue that with the little mushroom man you drew, there's an illusion of a third point by how he's positioned. Yeah, because what I was trying to do is actually, like, draw the, like, again, with the whole composition thing. I was wanting everybody to, like, kind of, like, I, that's the reason I positioned the ghosts the way I did. Yeah. Is, like, it mm-hmm. pulls your eyes around the piece. 
Yes. And that's like kind of the whole goal, right? Mm-hmm. Is I could see there's like a triangle um in the with between the ghosts. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um I guess like the thing with like uh ten step tutorials or, or whatever is it doesn't explain any of this stuff. No. You know, it doesn't like it yeah. doesn't make you think when you draw. It it gives you a simple solution, quote unquote solution, to complicated questions. Mm-hmm. Like, to complicated skills and things that you need to understand. And that's just not how the world works. Right. Like, if something is complicated, there's not a simple aspect. Like I said, it really does feel like a get-rich-quick scheme, but instead of rich, it's skill. It's not going to work. Yeah. You know, like, if you really, really, really want to improve your stuff, self-taught or not, um, you need to actually know what it is and understand what it is that you're doing. And like, Because the thing is, like, when you... Um, I know just like a bubble seems like such like a, a weirdly specific thing. It's it's just an example. I mean, this this applies to everything. But it, it's like when you actually understand what it is that you're doing, you can go into your artwork with confidence knowing it's going to be correct right. because you know what you're doing. You know so, what I mean? Where like if you are just um, recreating an image of like a cat because, oh, well, I drew a bunch of circles and lines and it's a cat and it looks like a cat, but... You know, that's good enough. It's like, you don't know what you're doing. You're just creating a flat... You're mimicking an image. You're not actually understanding how a cat... This is why fundamentals are so important and why I always bring it up with my students. Because you cannot... You cannot... If you cannot, like, draw with, um, with some level of precision... It, even understanding how things work, if you cannot go in with some level of precision and like understanding how to deconstruct things and reconstruct them, you won't be like just knowing how it works won't be enough. You know, they'll it'll so, definitely uh-huh. get it okay. right because it's There's like this- I've I've had many people be like, okay, well I understand how lighting works now. I'm like, do you? Because just because you understand yeah. it doesn't mean that you have the motor skills yet to recreate it. Yes. Right. Also, there's this the trend yeah. going around on TikTok between artists, and uh, it's a lot of. I see a lot of beginner artists using it. And while yes, like I understand why it's became such a big hype. They it, like the whole thing is they don't understand why it's why it's working the way yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. And it's right. it's being called like the pizza trend almost because uh, they're they're putting like a big blotch of red over the face of the character. And filling like uh, filling almost all the way to the edges with orange, and then blurring it out, and then hitting putting it on as overlay, and it causes the colors to usually be more vibrant. And people right. don't understand why they're doing that. Yeah, it also right. it also like, what doesn't it is that make much doing sense to make it because look more if you want it to be more vibrant, you can literally just take the hue and saturation knob and pump up saturation. Up yeah, <laughs> yeah, up and like so, like right. it's like I understand it becoming a trend with smaller artists because. It makes the colors a lot more pretty and vibrant, yes, but they don't understand how it works or what they're doing, and like how like if, if they adjusted the colors like around their piece, it could look even better. Yeah, because like, you, they're right. all they're well, all doing was, red and orange. Right. You don't want everything to right. be vibrant. You need some no. desaturation yeah. in your piece. The contrast. You do. And well, and, and like the thing is when when it comes to like. Uh, beginner novice artists doing something like that is like I understand that art is expression and like as long as you're happy with it then that's what matters in the end Mm -hmm. but it's also like if again like if you're wanting to learn like seriously uh again that's another shortcut Mm -hmm. of color theory color theory is so damn complicated it's ridiculous it's like you ever like um I sat down and learned it I was like this shit is mind reeling it's insane Mm-hmm. Well, it like, uh, I always, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite things to do is, so in some of my Undertale pieces that are like primarily the color palette is like a pale green, uh, a yellow, and like with darker hues of purple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, anytime I show somebody and I'm like, would you believe me if there's no green in this? And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, there's yeah. no green in this. Yeah. And they're like, what do you mean there's no green? That's like one of the main colors. I'm like, yeah, but there's like, no green in this. like, you pull that color around <laughs> right. white, I promise, it's not green. It is not green. Yeah, if you color pick it, mm-hmm. it is not green. It is a very, very pale, pale gray, gross looking yellow. If you yeah. isolate that quote unquote green and put it against white, it looks like a gross puke yellow. But like the reason why it appears green to our eyes the colors around it. next to... 
is exactly it's the colors influencing other colors around it because it is a pale yellow in comparison to the contrast of a very saturated yellow it is pulling out the cooler tones the purple undertones also help bring this out too mm, yes brings the cooler tones out of that um uh that primary color and so it's like when you have a pale yellow next to um it's a uh, complementary color of purple for undertone shadows mm -hmm. and it's also next to a very vibrant version of itself a very vivid yellow it appears green to our eyes mm -hmm. so it's like that is complicated color theory how do you make a color look like a color when you're not actually using the color that is the stuff that is really advanced and it's like things like shortcuts like putting an overlay layer of orange and red is not going to teach you any of that exactly. i feel like color theory is um you ever like for for those that like graduated high school or or whatever it's like you know how like in high school it's like so this is math this is uh fucking um i don't fucking know <laughs> geometry uh, calculus yeah. Yeah, this is here's calculus, for example. And you learn calculus, and you're like, okay, that's not too bad. And then you go to college, and then they're like, so forget everything you think you know about calculus. This is real calculus. And it, like, completely is different. It flips and you it's on your way head. More hard. Yeah. Right. And it's like everything you know is a lie. That's how color theory is. Yeah. Like, if you think color theory is only just like, oh, the color wheel and green and red are complementary colors, and that's it's it. It's way it's like, more than that. There's, right, it is... It's like you learn everything. You're like, okay, I understand color theory, and then you get into the advanced stuff, and it's like forget you, forget everything you think you know about color theory because it is it is super wild mm. how color theory works. So yeah, that that trend on TikTok is like a great example of like kind of a um, an illusion a, of understanding. It's, it's an yes, illusion an of illusion of understanding. Of understanding. It's like, especially because there's no like one size fits all like shortcut mm. for all artwork. Like if I put reds and stuff over uh, some of my pieces, it would completely decimate the color palette. I'm yeah. Going for. Yeah. Well, one thing, you that, know, uh, that people have noticed when they look at my um, artwork, right, is I had somebody recently tell me, like, I've noticed that whenever you do post processing, you use a very similar tonal curve every time. And I usually respond with, well, it, that's not always true because whenever I'm using a tonal curve, usually I, I, I add more red in the brighter areas because I want a warmer like skin tone. Usually because I use a lot of like, like uh, my, my most comfortable, comfortable areas, right. Is very warm lighting. I love warm lighting. So yeah, of course here. I'm going to enhance that by making it warmer in the brighter areas and cooler in the shadows. So, right. But, People don't understand that I've made artworks like uh, the crony one that has her at night where the entire thing is blue. I'm not going to crank up the red if everything's blue. Yeah. Right. But what I will do is I'll decide whether or not I want my my desaturated brighter tones if I want them to be more green. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's like because you do want a level of contrast. So, you know, it's like such as how... um the the like uh the drawing i was talking about for me um earlier how the the main color palette was like yellow green and purple but there's no green yeah. it's like the reason why i use purple is cuz it's complementary colors with yellow so mm -hmm. the darker tones which are cuz it was for the shadows um for the purple it's like those are going to disappear into the background because yellow is the dominant color mm -hmm. and so and then it's going to make it's going to bring out the yellow the it's going to um, and like highlight that stuff, mm -hmm. which is where the main focus is. And it's, be you know, it's the same thing with warmer tones and, 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 uh, and cooler tones. Mm -hmm. You, you want usually to, to, um, uh, to counter each other, right. I guess, to, to help accentuate each other. Um, yeah. And it's like, so of course you're going to use warmer tones for, uh, you know, the skin tones mm -hmm. and everything right, for your anime and then your cooler tones for shadows. Cause it's going to bring out the warmer skin tones, which is the focus mm -hmm. and everything like that. So it's again, like 10 step stuff doesn't like teach you this. Stuff. Yeah. So it's like short, shortcut filters. Don't teach you this. It, it's why a, when a while back I made like my art process, why, when I touched like my processing with tonal curves, I didn't focus so much on my specific curve. I used for the artwork. I instead tried to teach how to use the tonal curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, that's, that's much better. 
Um, Because it's like you, again, it's all about like understanding what the fuck you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, yeah, it's not about a matter of, I guess um, how to put it is more like, it shows the difference of how to blindly recreate something Mm -hmm. versus actually creating from scratch because you understand Mm -hmm. it. So like if you teach how something works, that's the way you want to do it. And it sounds, that's what you're doing. Um, It's great. When, like I said, because I'm usually better at teaching children how to do art because I've, I've been with, Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of after school programs and done art classes for kids. Um, Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I remember uh, parents being the most, difficult part in all of it because parents would come up to me like oh my my son now loves drawing thanks to you when is he gonna be like at your level and i'm and i'm just like he may never be you know yeah like that's that's purely up to his understanding and his motivation it's purely up to him whether or not he wants to take this to the next level because my job is to make him love art right as a kid, yeah, mm-hmm. that is, I would say, the most important thing as a child. As an Just adult, because- you can come to the understanding of how to get better. Very rarely do you have young, like, 16 to, like, 15-year-olds who enjoy the process of understanding life and how to draw. It's why there are so few prodigies. Prodigies aren't prodigies because they, um, they... We're just they were born with... with yeah, them. No, they, no. They, were, they were prodigies <laughs> they were because in some they way. understood how it worked. And yeah, they, they loved had, the they process. Had the, they had like something they were really interested in. Get nurtured, mm. and like because I remember right. back when I was in high school, uh, what like what had happened was I used to be like a fan of my art teacher before I even like actually took his class because uh, I followed his page and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he, here's the thing: the man is a really, really talented realism artist. Like, there is no, there is like he clearly has understanding of things. It's just he doesn't really quite know how to teach it. Yeah. Nor does he know how to branch off something he likes Mm -hmm. to, you know, nurture some, like nurture what somebody else likes. Mm -hmm. He wasn't entire like he he taught fundamentals pretty well. I will I will give him that. But like whenever I was trying to like ask for advice and stuff, he he like oh he would be like well this isn't realism and Mm -hmm. I'd be like I know I know that (laughs) yeah (laughs) right (laughs) like that's that's astute observation but (laughs) yeah. And right. well, it almost like like for I actually didn't even take art my senior year because mm. I could not I I was up to here with that teacher, and I had taken like a hot like a hot break from art mm-hmm. because like it almost just got killed for me. Right. I um one of the reasons why I didn't uh get like I didn't take art um like in high school and. I took one drawing class in college, but it was just for an EDCA to get my GPA mm-hmm. up. It wasn't actually like learn. I um I avoided uh college or like school learning environments for art because I had just heard so many horror stories of mm-hmm. it sucking the life out of the artist. Yep. You know, it, it's like so many so many college kids and like I will say high schoolers are just gonna hate it. The counselor mm-hmm. the counselor did warn us. They're like, Hey, if you like art, don't take art. Yep. Yeah, damn. One thing I remember because um, I don't know if uh how many people, especially with my current audience, know this about me, but there was years ago when I was nineteen, I'm twenty eight now, so almost ten years ago. Um uh, I actually Sorry, I'm going to age you, Alyssa. I, I actually met Alyssa back when I was still in the brony <laughs> phase of my life. Um, oh, God. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. And I oh, had so a fucking, fucking chip on my shoulder, I'll tell you what, mm-hmm. back then. Because <laughs> I, I got fame online for something that really wasn't all that hard and I really wasn't all that good at because it just was easy. I basically got handed the keys to the kingdom because I made a comic and somebody was in the inner circle of getting your shit on the front page of DeviantArt every single day. It was like, hey, this is the website where they do it. You want in? I'm like, yeah, I want in. And then it's just like all my trash was front page on DeviantArt. (laughs) Like, it was bad. And then I had this gigantic, like, fucking chip on my shoulder. And then... One day, uh, some, big some people might know uh, who I'm talking about, but I met a, a man named Peter J. Casey, all known online as Pete Capiti. 
And um, oh, great! I remember you he about him. humbled me quick. Uh, he <laughs> he was like, no, like sit down, like, kid. <laughs> you, you have no idea what you're doing. You're okay, but you're insufferable, and it's time to change that. Damn! It's like he sat you down. Like, uh, he's like, he's like, enough. do not he never put that, the teachings. He never put I was it. there when it was written. <laughs> yeah, right. Essentially, right, like he never worded it like that, but like essentially, like he was very nice about it. But he was also like, I could tell he was doing it because he saw promise. Right. And at the same, and he didn't want your ego to like destroy. Yeah, you. because he basically saw something. I was like, this, this kid needs an ego check. I also did animation at the time a lot more than I do now. And uh, mm-hmm. he was an animator, so he was like, yeah, like I could have a buddy who does animation. Like basically, how we became friends for a little bit was I was just talking about animation while at this while at Nightmare Nights in Dallas years ago, and. Um, he just runs up to me and goes, you do animation? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, he picks me up and just like strangles me with like his bear. He's like, oh my <laughs> God, nobody here does animation. You know, he, was, <laughs> he was desperate That's for awesome. a friend. I feel that. <laughs> so we, awesome. we became friends after that. But then, uh, you know, things started changing. Um, he, he refocused his life. He got bigger opportunities and we kind of drifted. You know what I mean? It wasn't that we didn't like yeah, each other. Right. It was that I was Life focusing more on anime. Ways. He was focusing more on his career in animation. Like he has, was getting a career. Finally, he was becoming an yeah. art director at a, a VR company. So yeah, good for him. Wow. Yeah. He started, he did really good. And, uh, I actually don't, I think he was the art director. Um, he might've just been an employee, but I'm pretty sure he was higher up than that. It's awesome. But um yeah, yeah, he no, he is fantastic. Like he he I I miss the guy a lot. Uh every now and then yeah. I'll say something on Twitter that that is art related and he'll be like and he'll get all nerdy about it. Like I started talking about like how, how shadows work and started showing like ambient occlusion and how like getting like closer and versus far away in the shadow will blur it the further away the shadow is in your hand and your object is from the mm-hmm. right yeah yes. and he, right yeah and he just makes this large like rambly like thread of like this is how it works this is like all the other things that go into it like this is so much more than just i love inclusion. i love when people do that it's and, so it's, i love when people talk and about i was like oh my god go off pd i this is what people yeah. need to see, you know <laughs> Right. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's like a particular love language to this stuff. Like when you hear someone like ramble on about something they're so interested oh in. Oh my god! When and, like, when an artist who knows what amazing. they're doing comes in and talks about it, they're not ranting because they're being a know-it-all. They're ranting because they're like, "Oh my god! If you only knew this, you'd understand how right. it works." Uh huh. They're gushing about something they're uh, passionate right. about. Like yeah. every time, like every time I it's like I, I get with, like this with my art friends, we're like we're gushing about these kind of things. I'm like, ah, oh, yes, this is like dirty talking to artists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny. Um, I, I mean, literally though. I mean, like Lost sent me the like what was it? The like five point like fisheye perspective. Yeah. Um, oh god. Yeah. And I was my first comment was, oh my god, this is like porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's like> porn. <laughs> I um it's it was, it's like artist porn it's so beautiful I'm like oh I could just stare at it forever yeah. like um you know uh <laughs> you gotta show that yeah I'll, I'll it's show my I'll, I'll go ahead and because drop it in for give your context <laughs> because it is so it is so beautiful you, yeah. you like can't not show it yeah but um but yeah no totally I mean like I, I think that's kind of what is fun about uh this little podcast right yeah and is the fact that it's literally kind of be kind of that yeah you know, it, it's, it's a bunch like, it's, it's a bunch of, a bunch of art nerds gushing. nerding out yeah yeah and right, like that's like right. some of my favorite things to do mm-hmm. and because it kind of also reminds me like when me and lost first became friends because uh so i met lost through a mutual friend of ours my friend hachi like my hachi name mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. i i usually call them by the real name but i'm not i'm pretty sure they probably don't want that out there so i'm not i'm not saying it yeah uh, uh-huh. <laughs> uh but i met i met them through there and I first only like saw them talk and chat and I was like, wow, they seem like a cool individual. And I was like, I want to talk to them. But I, I caught them whenever, uh, like he was just like in there one day, like in the VC. And I was, I, I talked for maybe five minutes and then my electricity went out. 
And I was like, oh, ah. that sucks. Yeah. And so like, I had to work up the nerve again. <laughs> like, yeah. That sucks. I'm and super so I approachable. I, I try to make know, myself as approachable as possible. I know, because like, uh, like when I finally like got the nerve back up again, because like I felt embarrassed by my electricity going out, even though it was totally something I could control. I felt like right. I felt like <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was like my thing, you know. It's so fucking funny because yeah. uh, Kat like my fault. manifested our friendship. She was like, "He yeah, will be really, my friend." I literally, I literally was like, "He's gonna be my friend. He just doesn't know it yet." <laughs> That's awesome. I, uh, fucking, I, am um, so, oh God, I'm such an introvert. I, like, I just, I never go to anybody. Like, yeah, like <laughs> it's always I was introduced like, I'm Luckily, you I'm, by, I'm an extrovert, uh, luckily. I was introduced to you by, uh, Captain Echo back in the day. Yeah. And he was just yeah. like, this is Alyssa. She does uh, Undertale. And I remember seeing it. And then, like, at the time, the Undertale animation had, like, I think it was, like, 40,000. And I was just like, this shit's going to go viral. Mm-hmm. Well, it had it definitely had to be more than that because in the first twenty four hours, Death by Glamour made a hundred k. Okay, views. well, yeah, then I might um, it might have been two hundred k maybe. But I was like, I, I was know. like, there's no way this shit isn't I, gonna go by. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah, it is um because he reached out to me asking to voice act for Metatom mm-hmm. and um, send me a clip, and I was I was so like taken by storm, like I you know I he has a crazy I'd good fuck. baritone voice. He does. He does. Yeah, but but yeah, it was like you uh it was like he introduced me to you and then you introduced me to a bunch of other people. I'm so sorry you Haley, met that and, version of me. Um <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. I I mean, well what what I laugh about is you were so convinced you knew what I was doing back then. I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. And you were like, "No, no, I could tell." I'm like, "No, I have no idea what you're I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just this is just, this is raw, unpolished, like, sticking around. Yeah. And I remember you started asking me questions, like, animator questions, like, FPS and, like, yeah. um, all these, like, uh, cinematography things. And I'm like, what's an FPS? And you're like, oh, my gosh, she really doesn't know what she's Oh, doing. yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was really <laughs> <laughs> I, like, because I remember you thought I was, I was just playing it off, like, being humble and, like, just joking around. And I was like, no. I genuinely have no idea what I'm, this is my first time even attempting storyboarding. Yeah. I didn't even know what an animatic was. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, like by definition, I just called, and that's why it's called a rough animation on YouTube is because I thought it was, that's what it was, was just an unpolished animation. I had no idea what an animatic was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it was so, and it was you last that like told me what it was. Yeah. And I think that is when it, the realization hit you of like, oh yeah, this, this is her first time. Yeah, I was blown <laughs> away know? as your first time. I'm still blown yeah. away how well you did for your first fucking time. But that, but I shouldn't be because I remember when I started like actually getting good at drawing, I realized how much easier animation was. Right. Well, and, and it's it's uh it is so crazy to me because it's like I uh meeting so many different people through Death by Glamour kind of opened my eyes of um how a lot of animators don't really know how to illustrate. They don't. You know? They don't know how to illustrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like, it's kind of like the um, uh, tattoo apprenticeship thing, you know? Mm. Yeah. Where it's like, I had no idea so many, like, tattoo artists weren't, like, preconceived artists beforehand, I would actually Um, argue that there's a reason a lot of animators aren't, good at animating and it's because they don't understand art right and it's like i mean if you're gonna animate you are going to improve an art just by like yeah osmosis just because you're drawing a lot exactly. but yeah it's like you animation know, it's, like do you want to um, draw do you want to do it a lot yeah <laughs> yeah and and it's it is wild to me how many um animators i met that like like they can generally draw, but like, like as far as like illustrating and like understanding like deep fundamentals, like like what you know what I do, mm-hmm. it's like totally different worlds. I had no idea it was. A t- I always thought it was connected, and it is connected to a degree. Mm-hmm. And then of course, if you are like studio level, like professional, obviously that's like required. Yeah. But it's you know a lot of like freelance animators 
they didn't draw beforehand. Right. Um, it's, it is wild. It like blew my mind how backwards it was to me. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) but, but yeah, I, uh, and I will say though, with that, we do need to start wrapping it up because we're approaching the, uh, an an hour and 20 minutes. So I I think, uh, this has been a fantastic conversation. I've really enjoyed it. I like the places it went. Uh, thank you so much for being here with me as usual, guys. Um, oh, yeah, I'm happy to. Yeah, so. Yeah, this is cool, man. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll, we can get a new one out soon, and I will get this edited, and we will see you guys next time. Bye. Woo! Bye. Bye. Oh, oh, he just left. <laughs> I thought, oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, he's like, yeah. You're like, bye. <laughs>